We've been driving through Ontario, and one of our first destinations on our trip was Manitoulin Island. My uncle lives there in a cabin in the bush, and he installs solar systems for people who want to live off the grid. So we asked my uncle a few general questions about solar systems and how they work. Not much sun today. Not the best for solar power, but still enough light to give us a little bit of electricity. Hi, I'm Andre Post. Here on Manitoulin Island, we're the largest freshwater island in the world. The north end of Lake Huron, living the life off-grid. I've got a little venture called uh, Manitoulin Off-Grid Systems, where I uh, supply and install systems for people that have no power and want to have a little bit of all the conveniences of modern life without being connected to Hydro One's sprawling network that costs a lot of money. So if you're sick and tired of paying for hydro, the best option is to invest in an off-grid system. And solar power is the, is the most obvious uh, first choice for source of power. PV panels convert solar energy into electricity. That electricity is uh, channeled through a charge controller that controls the amount of current going to a battery bank and it keeps the battery bank charged optimally, ensures long battery life, and then that battery bank in turn feeds power to your inverter and the inverter converts the DC power to AC power which you need to run your household appliances, your refrigerator, your kitchen appliances. That's your basic solar system. It's just PV panels, battery bank, uh, charge controller and an inverter. But of course the sun doesn't always shine, so you have to have a backup. Unfortunately the options are limited. Unless you live by a flowing stream or a waterfall or a well with positive pressure where you could you know, run a little turbine to create some electricity. Unless you have that luxury, which few of us do, you're pretty much stuck with burning fossil fuels to run a generator. That can be you know, either a gasoline, propane is also a fairly common type of generator to have. My choice of fuel is diesel because it's the cheapest uh, and most reliable for running your generator. Uh, I myself have a uh, four-cylinder Kubota diesel engine repurposed from a refrigeration trailer that is mated to a 15 kilowatt Stamford generator and it has an Autogen Dynogen auto start module that uh, kicks in when the batteries reach a certain low voltage. In my case I have a 24 volt battery bank so when it gets down to uh, about 22.3 volts the generator kicks in and bulk charges it back up to the high threshold. And uh, that fortunately in the summertime doesn't really happen very often, very rarely actually. In the winter time we might have a week or two with very little sun seven or eight or uh, nine hours a day. So that's not quite enough to sustain the system. But then of course that all depends also on the size of your battery bank. If you want uh, a longer period of autonomy, which basically means a period of time where your system will operate without any solar charging, you need a bigger battery bank and then typically more solar panels to charge it as well. The more solar panels you have, the faster your batteries will charge. The more batteries you have, the longer you'll hold your charge. Uh, but the batteries are the most expensive part of the system. So the key, really, is in learning to reduce your actual electricity consumption. And if you really want to say goodbye to those electricity rates, the only way to do it is to go off-grid and learn how to live on 3 to 5 kilowatt hours a day. Now that can be a challenge, but it can be done. I probably run about 2.5 to 3 kilowatt hours a day myself. Uh, so if anybody else uh, wants to share that same type of lifestyle, I can set you up with power. Um, so just you can give me a call, Manitoulin Off-Grid Systems. The number here is 705-859-2933. And the email address, you can send me uh, your information. And we'll, uh, we'll look after what you need and give you a price on, on what your requirements might be. And you can uh, join the good life off the grid. We asked Andre about some of the other projects Manitoulin Off-Grid Systems has installed. The very first system I installed for someone other than myself 
um, as far as residential systems was for my good friend Josh Eshkoglian and his wife Tina, who live in Wikwimakong, the only unceded reserve, native reserve in Ontario, on the east end of Manitoulin Island. The two of them live off the grid now. Well, have always lived off the grid, but for many years were using strictly a, a gas generator, which they would have to replace every year because it would wear out. So two years ago, almost three years ago, I, and I set them up with a solar panel, or a set of solar panels, six panels actually, each producing 230 watts, and they're two strings of three panels each. They go to a uh, Midnight Classic 150 uh, charge controller, which controls the charge to the battery bank, which is made up of multiple strings of six volt AGM batteries. So oh, there's, they've got a 4024, which is 4,000 watts and a 24 volt battery bank. Uh, so it's 4,000 watts, 24 volts DC powering it, and it produces four kilowatts at 240 volts AC. That's the, that's the inverter, it's a magnum 4024. Unfortunately, the batteries are the most expensive part of the system, but with battery technology improving constantly, we may see those prices come down. The price of the panels, the PV panels, have come way down now, so they're quite affordable. The electronics, of course, the inverters, the charge controllers, they're pretty pretty much a fixed price. And depending on what brand you get and well, you know what specs they have, the prices are, have a fairly large range. But you can expect a, a four kilowatt system typically to cost you somewhere between sixteen and twenty thousand dollars to to install it. But then if you can get your consumption down to three to five kilowatt hours a day, you can basically say goodbye to uh, Hydro One. I've done a couple of systems since, and I've been most of my systems lately have been 48 volts, a little more, a little more efficient, uh, and you get uh, you get 4,400 watts uh, power from the 4448 Magnum 4448 inverter. There's many other inverters out there that can produce more power. You can also stack the inverters together to get more power, uh, but then you also need to back that up with more battery bank, more PV power. So these systems are all expandable. You can, you know, you can easily get up to 20 kilowatts, a 20 kilowatt system with a large array and a large battery bank. You might be, you know, you might be spending forty thousand dollars, but you know, then you can almost use as much power as you would with a normal house connected to the grid would. Josh is uh, is an elder in residence at KTEI, which is the uh, Anishinaabe uh, College in Michigan. We went to visit Josh and Tina, not just to learn about their solar system, but also to learn about their practices and their connection to nature. This is what's called Wingash. Wingash. In, in our language. So, Wingash is uh, it's a very cleansing smudge. Josh had just harvested some Wingash, which is sweet grass in Ojibwe. Yeah. Like they were asking the same questions you asked. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, what do you do with it? And we use it as medicine. You could use it as a, as a, it's a woman's medicine. You make tea out of it. There's also lots of sprays now, natural sprays that they they've created. In fact, I got some inside. I always pick it every year. And I guess this is the season for it, or is yeah. It? Well, you are around July, so you want to try and make sure that I don't have any twins in here, or so then I just look at the color. We also take a look at the roots. And you dry it in the sun? Or? Yeah, yeah well, sometimes my wife will just hang it up here naturally, dry, dry it naturally. We enjoyed talking to Josh and Tina as they spoke to us about the metaphysical side of sustainable living, which is to say the relationship you have to build and maintain with your environment and nature. Sometimes they cut this into little pieces and um, put it for um, you know, the scented soaps, the homemade soaps. Oh yeah, yeah. And then the oils, they can turn into sweetgrass oil. Sweetgrass oil is uh, like used for cooking or? No, more like a liquid smudge or an essential oil in a bath. Smudge medicines are traditional native remedies. There are four main ones which are sweetgrass, tobacco, cedar, and sage. However, all plants can be used as smudge medicines as each one has a guiding energy and something to teach you. Each smudge evokes a different spirit or guiding energy. When offered to the supernaturals, which are wind, earth, fire, and water, they can heal you from negative energies or help guide you in your journey. So these little things, 
that we look at when you say you want to live off the land. That's the connection that you need, right? No matter where you go. It's connecting within your feet, and connecting with wildlife, connecting with birds, connecting with plants, and understanding the, uh, the energy within you and the energy around you. Yeah. And that teaching about the braid is about strength. Like one single strand of sweetgrass is not as strong as 21. That makes sense. My ancestry and all that came in here back in 1836. Mm -hmm. The original understanding of who we are okay. from the government's point of view. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And we would be recognized as Staten Senior. So we should go back to Manitoulin Island and see if we can get a let them to release the lands on Manitoulin. And when they went back, the treaties were already signed. Of course, they were, there was alcohol involved in regards to this whole process. And that's how they got to sign the treaty. Mm -hmm. So we never signed the treaty, this, this reserve, this community. That's why we're called Repentum a Seated Indian Reserve. Josh's wife, Tina, is a healer who uses natural and traditional remedies. One of the main things that she taught us was how to do the human pendulum. The human pendulum is a way to connect with your body and follow your physical instincts to find answers. Best way to ask for information is to um, ask a question and see how the body moves, and that's called the human pendulum. So you say your name, that's a true thing, like my name is Tina, and my body goes backwards, that's my yes, so I check. Is when I go backwards, is that my yes? Yes. Then I say, I want a false. I want to know what a no looks like. So I just tell a lie. Uh, my name is Timbuktu. And then I go forward. So that's my no. So anytime I ask a question and I move forward, the answer is a no. So shall I go out for dinner? No. Do I stay home? Yes. See? You're guided. And you listen to yourself, your higher power. We also spoke a lot about spirits, which don't necessarily need to be interpreted in a mystical way. For example, when someone says, get into the spirit of the game, it's more about being in tune with the moment and understanding what it has to give or teach you. Whether you're spiritual or not, building your understanding and relationship with your environment will maximize your ability to thrive sustainably and live well off the grid. Mm -hmm.